Now it's time for Tech 24, and for that, I'm joined by Peter O'Brien. Hello there, Peter. Hi, Charlie. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Um, we're here to talk about artificial intelligence once again. It's been a rapid week in the arms race between Microsoft and Google, who are, are trying to each be the king of AI. Absolutely, they are. And things have got serious. We've come a long way from people putting celebrities' faces on famous clips, clips like Arnold Schwarzenegger in uh, Titanic, for instance. No, we're really in the next phase, I'd say, of the AI race. And this week was perhaps the biggest ever for major AI releases. Um, the latest one of the latest on Thursday was when Microsoft released um, Unveiled Copilot, which will essentially do your work for you. It'll integrate into Microsoft's uh, Office suite. So, for instance, PowerPoint presentations, you can just ask Copilot, I want it to look like this. It will make it for you. Excel, it will work out your calculations and visualize them for you. Word, you can simply give it a prompt and it will write what a draft whatever Word documents you're writing. Teams, it will sit in a meeting with you and take notes, so no one has to take notes in a meeting. And it also they also unveiled something called Business Chat, which allows um, these apps to be kind of connected together with AI. So for instance, if you're running a small business and you've got people um, texting, uh, chatting on Teams, uh, calling, uh, emails as well, you can say at the end of the day, I just want a summary of everything that's been said and it will do that for you. But it wasn't the first to the punch. Google got there two days earlier, releasing its own, uh, unveiling its own AI productivity suite, which does much the same thing. For instance, Magic Wand for text composition is going to do very much the same thing for, um, uh, for Google Docs, plus a range of tools for business customers. So we're really now seeing that the release of OpenAI's ChatGPT in November was a, a watershed moment, and it spurred these companies on to really be after, after the, 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 as you say, the, the, the throne of this, this AI um, power. And ChatGPT was what brought a lot of people uh, into following AI developments. And there's actually been big news from the company OpenAI this week as well. Yeah, that's right. So the San Francisco-based company unveiled GPT-4, which is the latest iteration of their language model, which um, ChatGPT is based on. So uh, it can now do even more than it was doing before. It's a significant improvement. It can turn, for instance, a hand-drawn sketch into a functional website, which uh, is what they showed off in the demo it can uh you can show it a funny meme on the internet and it will explain to you exactly why it's funny. Uh, it can code a simple computer game like Tetris in a matter of minutes. And you can even take a picture of the inside of your fridge and it will recommend you recipes to make using the ingredients that you have in your fridge. Um, it was also put through a bunch of rigorous higher education exams and did much better in most of them than the previous iteration chat, uh, previous iteration uh, GPT 3.5 did. Uh, it passed the US bar exam in the 90th percentile as opposed to the 10th, and it's now a qualified sommelier, so it can tell you all about wine. But interestingly, it remains stuck on English language and English literature when it comes to these exams. So that's just a reminder that it still makes plenty of factual mistakes. And OpenAI is, acknowledges this. Um, the, uh, the OpenAI chief, Greg Brockman here, his explanation was, well, it's not perfect, but neither are you. <laughs> Now, Chinese tech companies wanting to get in on this as well, uh, notably Baidu. Tell us yeah, about that. Yeah, so uh, on Thursday, Baidu uh, launched Ernie. It's highly anticipated response to these American offerings. And the launch did not go down well. They only showed um, recorded demos rather than live demos. And it was simply you know, doing what Bing Chat and ChatGPT have been doing for, for weeks now. So the top stock price initially took a hit and then has recovered since uh, the first users have got their hands on it and realized, OK, it's it's not so bad. But like all the Chinese chatbots being developed, there are some things that are simply um, out of bounds. You can't talk about Chinese politics, Xi Jinping, that kind of thing to it. OK. To me, and I'm sure a lot of people watching this, it looks like, oh, we might all kind of be getting our own AI personal assistant who can help us with cooking and even explaining uh, internet speak and memes to us. Yeah. But there's a lot of people who are also saying this is moving too fast. Why? Yeah, I mean, one of the main reasons is these factual errors I'm talking about, these so-called hallucinations. You've got to imagine that at scale, uh, these are going to be a huge problem. One mistake in 10 correct answers isn't necessarily that bad. But if you're talking about 10 million mistakes and 100 million mistakes, well, that's a lot of mistakes. And it's not just that. Many people in the AI safety community see an existential risk and are worried about the direction we're heading in, particularly as this week we saw Microsoft, for instance, laying off its entire AI ethics team. Uh, central to these worries is the so-called called alignment problem. How can we align AI to our values? And what values do we even want it to align to? 
Well, if you want to sort of ponder these ideas, you can head to the Misalignment Museum in San Francisco, which has just opened. It's a sort of tongue-in-cheek memorial to humanity after a repentful AI has uh, killed us off. One piece is made out of paper clips. To hear why, let's listen to the ex exhibition's curator, Audrey Kim. A thought experiment in a lot of AI safety conversations called the paperclip maximizer problem. And it's this idea that if an artificial intelligence is programmed to create paper clips, and as it gets more and more developed and more powerful, it might stay focused on that single optimizing point and potentially destroy most of humanity at the world, just keep making more paper clips. I, for one, welcome our paperclip overlords, Charlie. <laughs> Oh, okay, me not so much, but thank you. <laughs> thank you for that, Peter, from our tech desk, bringing us all of the good and bad tech news. <laughs>